Greetings everyone, we will continue our discussion on programming for problem solving using C. In the previous session, we have looked about arrays and strings. In this session, we will be going for new topic called as pointers. Greetings everyone, we will continue our discussion on programming for problem solving using C. In the previous session, we have discussed about arrays and strings and structures and unions. In this session, we will be going for a new topic called as pointers. So, first initially we will be looking about the part which you are going to learn, what are the contents of those pointers. Then we will be looking about introduction to pointers and at last we will be learning about what is a pointer to a pointer. So, as a part of this, we will be having initially introduction to pointers, then we will be learning about pointers to pointers, we will be learning something called as pointer compatibility, then we are having something called as L, L value and R value. So, uh, after, uh, along with that, we will be looking about the programmatical parts regarding all these concepts. The second part of this thing is, we will be having pointer applications, how arrays and pointers are related. We will be looking at pointer arithmetic and arrays, how pointer arithmetic is related with arrays. Then we will be looking about an important part called as the dynamic memory allocation. Then we will be having array of pointers and then we will be looking about all the programmatical tips regarding these topics. And the last part of this thing is we will be having something called as the preprocessor commands. So we will be looking about those preprocessor commands at the last. Okay. So we will be looking about what are pointers and uh, how the what are the various applications of pointers or where you are going to use pointers in arrays and functions. At last we will be looking about your processor commands or preprocessor commands. Okay, first, we will be looking about a pointer. A pointer in C language is a variable okay, which holds the address of another type of variable of same data type. Okay, so, a pointer is a variable which holds the memory addresses of other variables of same data type. Okay, so, we will be looking with an example, but remember that a general variable will store values. Okay, if I am having an integer variable, it will store integer values. If I am having floating point variable, it will store floating point values. If I am having a character, it will store character data. Based upon your declaration of your variable, it will store those type of data. But your pointer is a special variable which will store the memory addresses. Okay, pointers will store memory addresses okay it will show memory addresses so pointers are used to access memory and manipulate the data that contains at that address so pointers will be used to store the addresses or they it will be used to access the memory or addresses and we can try to manipulate that particular data present in those address values okay so that is about your pointer. So pointer is also a variable which will hold the memory addresses. When I hold the memory addresses, using that memory addresses, I can manipulate the data present in that memory address. So to better understand how to be able to visualize your memory present for a computer. So in a computer, whatever may be the size of the data you are having, whatever may be the size of the memory you are having, the complete set of memory will be having, or the memory will be divided into parts called as memory cells. Okay, they will be divided into memory cells, and each and every memory cell will be given one memory address. So, this memory address value will be dependent upon your complete size of the memory. For example, if your size of the memory is uh, 1 MB, okay, so 1 MB means you will be having 1024 bytes, 1024 bytes. So, if your computer is a 1 byte computer, then 1 memory cell will be for 1 byte. Okay. So, 
If your computer is a one byte computer, if a memory cell will be store, able to store one byte of memory. Okay, it will be able to store one byte of memory. If your complete computer has one MB of data, one MB of memory, at the time you will be having 1024 memory cells. Okay, you will be having 1024 memory cells and those memory cells will be uh, named from 0 to 1023, like that. So, since your present day modern day computers are having large sizes of memory, it will not be usually 1 MB, it will be 1 TB like that. At that time, the memory, sorry, the memory addresses will be a very big numbers. So, if you see, the memory addresses will be in this manner. Okay. And based upon the declarations in your program, your memory will be assigned to a particular variables. So, if you see, you are, here you have declared something called as int sum. You have declared int sum in your uh, particular memory. So, when I declare this variable in my program, so since it is an integer, 4 bytes of memory will be assigned for sum. 4 bytes of memory will be assigned for sum. So, these 4 bytes of memory are assigned for sum. In the same manner, if I declare short age, 2 bytes of memory will be assigned for age. And in the same manner, double average at the time 8 bytes, so 8 memory cells will be assigned for this one. And in the same manner, your pointer is also a variable. So, these are our variables that is integer is a variable, short is a variable, double is also a variable. At the same time, your pointer is also one variable. So, pointer also will store some values. Okay. So, it will be also be given one memory cells. Okay. It will be also given some memory. So, what you have to understand that whenever you declare one variable in your program, it has to be assigned some memory. Each and every memory it is assigned. So, there will be a set of memory cells assigned to a particular declaration. Okay. So, based on that, each and every variable will be stored in one of the memory locations. So, the pointer tries to store these memory locations. Okay. So, here if you are having some variable, some variable will try to so store some value. Here, you are trying to store 255 value. Okay. The 255 value will be present in hexadecimal here. In the same manner, a pointer will try to store the memory addresses. That is, so if uh, your PTR sum, it is in star PTR, this is a pointer. I will show you how you have to declare. If this is a pointer which stores the address of sum, okay, at the time the sum address is this value, that particular value will be present here. Okay, that particular value will be present in this memory. Remember, your general variables will store normal values. For example, sum will store 255, that is, since it is an integer, it will store 255. Short age, age will store, is stored as minus 1. And average, we are storing it as this large value. But since it is a pointer, pointer will store only the memory addresses. Okay, we are trying to store the address of sum. That particular sum's address is this location that location will be stored here. So, this is the basic differentiation between your variable that is general variables and your pointer variables. General variables will store normal values based upon the data type. Your pointer variables will store memory addresses based upon which data type it is pointing to. Okay. Since it is an integer, it will point to an integer data type. If it is a float, it will point to a floating data value. If it is short, it will point to short. It is a double, it will point to double memory address. Okay, based upon the declaration, you will be having your pointer. So, the basic differentiation is your variables will store your variable values, your pointers will store your variables memory addresses. That is the differentiation. And you will be having this memory, you should be having this uh, conceptual view of this memory addresses. Okay, when you declare any variable, you will be having memory address for those variables. These pointers will store these memory addresses. So, whenever a variable is declared or defined in C language, a memory location is assigned for it in which its value will be stored. As I told you, if I am having a declaration int sum is equals to 10, okay, 
four bytes of memory will be assigned okay the name of the memory location will be sum and the value 10 value that is the sum value will be stored in the memory location and we will be assigning sum we will be having one memory address for that memory you have assigned for sum that is a thing with which and every variable in your program when you easily check this memory address using this ampersand symbol you can find the memory address of any variable by using ampersand symbol or this is also called as address of operator you can find the address of any memory location that is you can find the address of any variable by using the address of operator or ampersand symbol if var is the name of your variable then address var will give its address okay if i if the sum is the name of your variable address sum will give the address of this particular sum that is it will give the memory location in which your sum variable is stored so your 900 9000 will written here okay whatever the large memory location value it will written here that is about your basic difference between your memory and pointer so this is a program to represent your pointers sorry to represent your address so initially you are having hash include and inside the main i am declaring a variable var which is equals to 7 what i am doing is print f value of the variable is percentage d value will be represented by okay so this is var and value means this particular value will be present here if i want to print this value percentage d var memory address of the variable var is percentage x okay or you can use percentage u or you can use percentage d all are valid okay so address of var so if i write address of var whatever may be the address for for this particular variable this particular address will be printed here okay okay so here will be printing the 7 bar so the output would be value of the variable is 7 memory address of the variable is some value which is the memory address for that particular var it will depend upon the system in which you are executing so each each system will give different address values for the same program okay based upon the system in which you are executing this address value will vary okay so this is how you can access the address of any variable by using your ampersand symbol so whenever a variable is declared in the program system allocates a location and address to that variable in the memory to hold the assigned value as i told you whenever i declare a value that is int a in this situation and if declaring int a is equals to 10 okay this location has its own address number if you see a is the name of that location okay 10 is the value that is present in the location and this is the location and atf is the address of that particular location okay so whenever you declare a value this particular thing will happen the variable will be given one memory and that particular memory will be having one memory location address okay in that address only whatever the value you assign the value will go into that address only so that is how your basic variable will work we can access the value 10 either by using the variable name a okay so if i want to access the variable i'm sorry the value 10 i can use i can use the name of the variable a or i can use the address as well so far we have been using only the name that is a if i want to print the particular value a how i am printing i'm using printf percentage d a so this is how we will be printing the particular variable name sorry variable value that is 10 so you can access this value 10 by using a so far you have been using this method you can also use this particular address 
so you can also use the address of the variable to print the value okay so you will learn how to use the address so you can access the value 10 either by using the variable name a or by using its memory address atf so the question is how you can access a variable using its address since the memory addresses are also just numbers they can also be assigned to some other variables so memory addresses are also just numbers why because you can see as you already have seen they will be just numbers from 0 to some large values so you can also use that particular numbers to assign into another variable that variable is called as pointer so the variables which are used to hold your memory address are called as pointer variables a pointer variable is therefore nothing but a variable which holds an address of some other variable and the value of a pointer variable gets stored in another memory location okay what is the meaning of this is you will be having a general variable and you will be having a pointer variable okay so a general variable will be given some value 10 and your pointer variable will be given an address of another variable so if you try to if this is the address of a this particular value will be stored here adf will be stored okay so general values value will be present here but the pointers value will be present here okay so a pointer is a variable which will store the address of another variable so this is conceptual view of your pointer where PTR is another variable which will store the address of other variables. So PTR is trying to store the address of A. So ATF is present here. That is address of A. So this is a pointer. And as you know, pointer is also a general, sorry, pointer is also a variable. So it also will be having its own address. That is 82C is the address of PTR. So ATF is the address of A, AT2C is the address of PTR. So pointer is also a variable which will store the address of other variables. So this is the introduction to pointers. So why you have to use, before using pointers, why you have to use the pointers? Pointers are more efficient in handling arrays and structures. So in the next sessions you will be learning about pointer arithmetic where you can use your pointers to move from starting of the array to the ending of the array without much problems okay you can manipulate your arrays you can manipulate your strings much easier with your pointers than what you have done in your strings okay and also you can access your structures much easier by using your pointers okay we'll be learning about all those topics in the further sessions but you can efficiently manage your arrays and structures by using your pointers Next, pointers allow references to functions and thereby help in passing functions as arguments to other functions. Okay, we will be learning about functions in the further parts but your pointers will be helpful for you to pass some arguments in functions as well. Okay, it reduces the length of the program and execution time as well. When you use your pointers, since you can directly access the memory of your system, okay, you can execute programs faster than what you write without your pointers. Okay, since pointers can access the system's memory faster and the execution time is faster, that is why most of low-end programs will be written using pointers. It allows C language to support dynamic memory management. Okay, you'll be learning about dynamic memory management in the pointers part as well. So this is a special uh, functions where you'll, you'll be having a special set of functions where you can assign dynamic memory that is where you can assign memory dynamically so far you have been done you have you have been doing memory statically that is when i declare you will be given value by come you will be given memory by the compiler okay that is by declare during the declaration itself the amount of memory will be decided by the compiler but dynamic memory means it will be decided during the execution of your particular program okay that you will be learning as a part of this pointers part okay as you can see there are you know, too many benefits for your uh, pointers concepts so there are you can ex uh, improve the execution time it will be used to uh, implement dynamic memory and it will be used to implement your arrays and uh, 
manipulate your arrays and uh, structures much efficiently and they will be used in functions for referencing purposes. So they, are, they will be used with combinations of all the constructs what you are going to learn in the future. Okay. So this is, these are the benefits. Now how you can create your pointers? The first part is how you have to declare your pointers. So the general syntax is you have to specify the data type first, then give a space. After that you have to specify the star symbol and the pointer name. Okay, pointer name. So, for example, you are having int, int means the data type, next star pdr. Okay, this will differentiate, the star will differentiate it from your general variable. If you are having a general variable, you will be writing int a. Okay, int space a, this is a general variable. So this tells the compiler that a is a normal variable that is an integer variable which will store integer value. Okay, it will store integer value. If I place the star here, it will tell the compiler that it is not a normal variable, it is a pointer variable. So it will store only memory addresses. It will not store general values. Okay, it will not store general values. It will store memory addresses which memory addresses it has to store. It will store only integer values memory addresses. Okay, when I place int, I am telling that it will be pointing to an integer. I am not telling that an integer value will be stored in PTR. I am telling that it will be having memory address. That memory address will be of a integer's address. Okay, that memory address will be of a integer, not a floating point value. Okay, so this PTR will contain the memory addresses of integers. If I write float star fp like this, I am telling that fp is a pointer variable which will contain addresses. These addresses are of floating point values. That is, if I declare a float point value, that is float b, okay. This fp can contain the address of b. It cannot contain the address of a. Okay. So the data type here specifies that to which pointer I am pointing to. Sorry, to which data type I am pointing to. If I am specifying int, my ip is pointing to an integer. If I am specifying float, I am telling that my pointer is pointing to a floating point value. Double means double value. Char means it is pointing to one character value. Okay, so each and everything will store the memory addresses, but the data type specifies that to which variable it is pointing to. Integer means it is pointing to an integer, floating point means it will be pointing to a floating point in value. That is the declaration of your pointer. Once after declaration, pointer initialization. Pointer initialization is a process of assigning address of a variable to a pointer variable. Once after declaring, you can assign the address of a variable to the point. So pointer variable can only contain address of a variable of the same data type. As I told you, if it is an integer pointer, it can contain the address of only an integer variable. If it is a floating point where pointer, it can contain the address of only for a floating point variable. So this is an example for your initialization part where you are having a declaration in a is equals to 10. This is an integer variable. And then you are performing a declaration of the pointer int star ptr. This is a pointer declaration. Then I am performing ptr is equals to address of a. So ptr is equal to address of a means now whatever may be the memory address of a, that particular address will go into your ptr. So since this is an integer pointer, it can point only to the integer variable. So there is another concept related to your uh, initialization that is about null pointer. So at the initial time of declaration, if you are not sure about which variable address to assign, that is for example, I declare int a is equals to 10 int b is equals to 20 okay at the same time if i have an integer point 
if I am having an integer pointer. At the initial time, I doesn't know whether I have to point to A or point to B. Okay, I doesn't, I am not using whether to point it to A or point it to B. So, if I am not sure about which variables are addressed to assign to a pointer variable while declaration, it is recommended to assign a null value to your pointer variable. Okay, you are having a special value called as null value. Okay, instead of having, if you don't know, you can initialize to null like this. If you don't know which to assign, initially I can keep it to null. Later part of the program you can assign it to any variable, that is I can place address of A. Okay, it is like giving 0 at the initial stand. Okay, later you can change that value. So initially if you don't know anything to do, I can give it as null. So a pointer which is assigned a null value is called as a null pointer. So this particular instance PTR1 is called as a null pointer because we have assigned null value to the particular point. So this is an example about your null pointer. So initially I have just declared that PTR and assigned it to null. It doesn't know what to do. In the later part of the program you can assign this particular PTR to any variable. Next using the pointer that is once after assigning the addresses how to use the pointer or dereferencing of your pointer. So what is the dereferencing part is so if you are having your general variable a that is you have given a is equals to 10 and if you are having the pointer which is pointing to this variable let's take the memory address as ATF so the ATF will be present here so using the pointer means okay you can as I told you already you can print the value of this variable 10 by using 8 sorry by using a or you can print the 10 value by using atf that is the address okay you can print the particular value by using a or you can print the same value by using the address so by using the address mean you are having the address in the pointer okay you can use this ptr and print the 10 value that is what we are calling it as using the pointer so using the pointer means accessing this value or dereferencing of the pointer so to where it is referred, that is to where this pointer is referred, I am dereferring that particular thing. Okay, so I am trying to print the value 10 by using the memory address. Okay, that is called as dereferencing. Once a pointer has been assigned the address of a variable, to access the value of the variable, pointer is dereferenced by using in direction operator or dereferencing operator star dereferencing operator star so this star is different from what you have used for the declaration remember your star will be having a specific meaning based upon the context you are using for example if you are using your star between two variables okay then the star meaning is this for multiplication okay this is for multiplication. If I use the same star in your declaration, if I use the same star in the declaration, it means that this is not a variable, this is a pointer variable. Okay, if I use star separately with a single value or single, okay, single pointer then we will be calling it as dereferencing operator or indirection operator. So based upon the place you are using the star, we will be having different context meaning. So if it is used between two variables, it is multiplication. If it is used in the declaration, it is a pointer declaration. If it is used with the pointer, we will be calling it as dereferencing operator or indirection operator. So how we are going to use this indirection operator or dereferencing operator? So this is a program, basic program with you are having declaration int a and star p. So you are having variable a. Okay. So let's take some uh, address as atf and you are having a pointer variable p 
Okay, let's take this thing as a given f, a different address. First, I, what I am doing a is equals to 10, so 10 value will go into this particular thing. P is equal to address of A. P is equal to address of A. So the address of A is ATF. ATF will go into P. So so far these are declarations. Then we are having a series of print statements. In order to understand the meaning one by one, we have to see. So the first one is print F percentage D star P. Star P, as I told you, this is a dereferencing operator. So the star can be remained as value at the address of. Okay, the star can be uh, studied as value at the address of P. Star P means value at the address of P. So value at the address of P. So so P will contain one address. What is the value that is present in that address? That is the meaning of dereferencing or indirection. That is indirectly what is the value of A. Okay. So P means, star P means value at the address of P. P will contain one address. What is the value present in that address? I have to print that particular value. So this statement will print 10. Okay. This statement will print 10. The second statement if you see star address of A. So what is first this is star then I have written address A. So first what is address of A? Address of A is ATF. Okay, ATF. So star ATF means value at the address of ATF. Okay, value at the address of ATF. What is the value at the address of ATF? 10. So this statement also will print 10. The third statement is address A. Percentage U address A. What is address A? ATF. This will print the address that is ATF. Next, print of percentage U P. So we are writing directly P. P means what is the value that is present in P? ATF. Remember, if I write P, that is the value in P. If I write star P, that will be value at the address of P. That is the difference. P means that is the value that is present in P. So it is ATF. Then address of P. Last statement is address of P. What is the address of P? 81F. So that particular value will be printed here. So this is the meaning of your complete pointers, that is this is the basic support pointers and how to implement each and everything regarding pointers. You should know the memory addresses, that is the conceptual view, you should know how you are assigning the address to one variable, okay, and how you are dereferencing your variable. So in the next session we will be looking about uh, more topics regarding pointers, about pointers to pointers and other topics. Thank you.